when it comes to problems on arrays, the sliding window algorithm is really important. And there is one such problem on lead code that just touches the surface of how this sliding window algorithm actually works. So let us see what is it all about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you this problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start with the brute force approach and try to understand the scenarios in which this sliding window algorithm is actually helpful. After that, we will use this to come up with an efficient solution and then also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding this problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an integer array and one more integer that is k. So we have a sample test case, right? You have this integer array and a value of k is defined. So what do you have to do? You have to find the maximum average possible for a contiguous subarray that has the size k. So a contiguous subarray simply means that all of the elements should be together. You cannot have a subarray where you are choosing these three elements because these are not contiguous, right? Contiguous simply means that you have to choose an array where all the elements are together. It can be of size 1, it can be of size 2, or it can be of size 5 also. Right? So this is what a contiguous subarray means. Now, in this problem, you are given a size 4, correct? That means you have to choose contiguous subarrays of the size 4. So one subarray can look like this, one subarray can look like this, and the other subarray can look like this, correct? And out of all of these different possible subarrays, you have to find which subarray has the maximum average value. And then you have to return it. For this particular problem statement, you will be able to find out the maximum average when you are choosing this subarray. The total of all of these elements will be 51. And then when you take out the average, you will get 12.75. And for this particular test case, this value 12.75 is your answer right? Similarly, let us look at our second test case. In a second test case, I only have one element and the value of k is also one. That means we have to choose contiguous subarrays of the size one. Since we have only one element available, the only subarray I can choose will have the element five and I divide it by the value of k that is equal to 5.0. So for a test case number two, this is your answer. An important thing to note over here is that the value of k will always be less than the size of the array because that is how you will be able to select your contiguous subarray, right? Think about it. If you have just seven elements in the array and the value of k is 10, you cannot select 10 elements from just seven elements, right? So this is a constraint and it is already given in the problem. So you do not have to check about it or even worry about it. So now if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and try to understand the scenarios where the sliding window algorithm actually starts to help you out. To understand things better, let us take a bigger example. And you can see that I have a larger array, but the value of k is same. So once again, I have to find out different contiguous subarrays of the size 4. So when you start to approach the problem, what does a brute force approach look like? With a brute force approach, you can at least be sure that a solution to a problem exists. So what is the first thing that comes to your mind? The first thing should be that, okay, I can find out all the different possible contiguous subarrays. So how will they look? You will have one subarray like this. It has the size four, right? Similarly, you can have one more contiguous subarray over here. So these are just two different contiguous subarrays. But if you look closely, there are a lot of different contiguous subarrays of the size 4 prevent in this. And so on, right? You get the idea. And once you have determined all of these different contiguous subarrays, what will you do? You will try to find out the average of each of these combinations. So you will add up all of them and then try to divide by 4. You will get a certain value and then you will compare that, hey, okay, this is my maximum average. So this is the answer, right? So after a lot of iterations, ultimately, yes, you will be able to arrive at a contiguous subarray which has the maximum average. But do you see what just happened? You wasted a lot of time just to find out all of these different possible subarrays and then computing their solutions. And in such scenarios, 
this brute force approach is not feasible. It will take up a lot of time. So what do you do over here? If you look closely, you never take any advantage of the fact that this sub array has to be contiguous, right? You cannot have one element over here, one element over here, and then two elements over here, right? This is not the case. So somehow you have to take advantage of the fact that all of these elements should be groups of four. Also, at the same time, we do not take any advantage that we have calculated the results earlier. Think about it. When I first had my sub array like this, I am adding all of these four elements, correct? Now, what happens when I change my sub array to these four elements, 12, minus 5, minus 6 and 50? You can see that these three elements are already the same. I am just removing one and I am adding 50. This is the only change that I'm doing. So why not take advantage of it? And this is where the sliding window algorithm comes in place. So what happens in a sliding window algorithm? Let us take up our example array once again. You can see I have this array and once again, the value of K is four. As the name suggests, a sliding window. It is literally like a window. So what actually happens is you will define a window that has a size of four. Currently, in this window, you can see you have four elements, right? Because the value of K is four. So when you add out all of these, you get a sum equals to, this is my current sum, right? If you add all of these numbers, you will get a two. Now, as the name suggests, a sliding window. A sliding window means you are literally gonna take this window and then slide one step ahead. What just happened over here? You removed the element one, and you added the element 50, correct? And that is exactly what you will do in your sum. You remove the element one and then you add the element 50. So what is your new sum now? Your new sum now is 51. Let us go one step ahead now. Once again, I take up my window and then I slide it one step ahead. What happens? You remove the 12 and you added a three. So I'm literally gonna do the same thing. I remove a 12 and I add a three. Do you realize what just happened? In just three iterations, I was able to determine three sums, two, 51 and 42. And to get the average, I can divide each of these values by K, right? This will be my average of each of the contiguous sub arrays. So even without determining what are all the possible contiguous sub arrays, I can just calculate the sum and then proceed ahead. So what will happen next? Once again, this window will slide one step ahead and you are going to get new candidates. You remove minus five and then you added a zero. So I'm removing minus five and I'm adding a zero. I get my new sum and that is 47. Now you must be able to visualize why this is called a sliding window algorithm. So what will happen eventually is this window will go over all of these elements one by one and it will stop at the very end. Try to think. Even if your array is very large, you are just going to slide through all the elements one by one and you will be able to get the sum of each possible contiguous sub array. You just need to keep on dividing by this value k and then you can determine that, hey, this will be my average. Keep a track of the maximum average possible and hey, that's your answer. So this is a very basic concept about how the sliding window algorithm actually works. Let us now quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it is working in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have a sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function find max average. And it has the value k that will determine my window size. So what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we have to start somewhere, right? So I will define a sum for my starting window because that is where I start. So I run a for loop with just k elements. So this will add up all of my first four elements and then keep a track over here. So my current sum is two, right? Now, what do you do? First of all, you just initialize that. Okay, maybe this is my max sum. So I store it over here. Going forward, you start your sliding window. My start index is zero. So I start from over here and my end index is K because that is how I know that, okay, this has to be my window size, correct? Moving on, I start a while loop and this while loop will continue until your end index reaches the very end of your array. 
and at every iteration, what do I do? I have to slide the window one step ahead. So check out this step. You remove the previous element. That means you remove the element at the start index. So one will be gone. And then in the next step, you add your next element. So you add the element at the end index and end index is pointing at this element 50. So I'm just gonna add it. And this will give you the new sum and that is 51. Once you get any new sum, you just need to update the value of your max sum because you have to keep a track, right? So you check and verify that, hey, is my sum greater than the max sum? If yes, you just update it. So the value of max sum now changes to 51. So you realize what just happened. I updated my window, right? I am now looking at all of these four elements. And this is how the window slides. Also notice that in this loop, I update my start index and the end index. Because I'm done with the start index right now, I update this value. So my pointer will move one step ahead. And similarly, I update my end index also. So now my end index is pointing at the next location, correct? Once this loop runs again, what will you do? You will remove the value at start index, so 12 will be gone and you will add the value at the end index, so 3 will be included. This will once again give you a new value of sum and you are going to compare it with the value of max sum. This time it will not be updated because the resulting sum will be 42, correct? Also, you have updated the value of start index and the end index. So now your window will ultimately change to this last sub array. Once you reach the end, you know that you have traversed through your entire array. And now is the time to return the average. To return the average, you just take the value of max sum and divide it with the value of k. So you will divide 51 by 4 and that will be your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you iterate through the array only once and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 because you need constant space to arrive at your answer. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that this is a very introductory concept of how the sliding window algorithm actually works. Now, it is not necessary that it could be only an array of integers. You can also have an array of characters. You can also have an array of different strings itself. And the sliding window concept actually remains the same. That you will have to define a window size and then you navigate it out throughout your array. So think about it. There could be a problem where you're given a character array and you have to identify the minimum window size where you can find all the vowels, right? So think about it. There can be a lot of different scenarios. So while going through this video, did you face any problems? Or have you seen any other such problems which are solvable through this sliding window algorithm? So tell me all of it in the comment section below and it would be also helpful for anyone else also who is watching this video. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. I will be coming up with more such concepts in my future videos. Until then, see ya.